wanted to talk today about the Trinity, about the understanding that we have of our God being one God in three persons. Now, you might be aware that the word Trinity is not used in the Bible. And so the question that some people have because of that is, well, where then did this word even come from? Well, the idea of the Trinity came along very early in the church's history, right at the beginning in the first centuries as the church began the task of trying to define its theology. And the church began to define its theology as it wrestled with some important questions. And the first important question the church was wrestling with was, who is Jesus? Was he just a man or was he the Lord? And the answer to that question, of course, is that the church looked at the scripture and their understanding of Jesus and said that Jesus is in fact the Lord. He is God himself. That then prompted the next question. And the next question was, well, if Jesus is God and the Father is God, do we then believe in more than one God? And the answer, of course, was, well, no, we do not believe in more than one God. But what exactly then do we believe about the nature of God? And so the church began to wrestle with that. And for several hundred years, they poured over the scriptures, looking at who God was in the scripture and how God was presented in order to answer this question. And over time, the picture of God that emerged from the scriptures was one God in three persons. And the word that the church came up with to try to describe what they saw in scripture, this picture of God, was tr the Trinity. So the word Trinity isn't used in the Bible, but the word Trinity is a description of the picture of God that we see presented in the Bible. One place you kind of see that is in Matthew 28, 19, where Jesus says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. G Jesus himself uses that Trinitarian formula, mentioning all three members of the Trinity and holding them together uh, as one. Uh, in the way that he speaks. The doctrine of the Trinity was cemented in around the fourth century with the Nicene Creed, and the church's uh, theology has been that of Trinity ever since then. But even though the theology of the Trinity is settled, and now we know where the word comes from, that doesn't mean that understanding how God is three in one is always easy for us. And so over the years, people have used different images and illustrations to try to describe it, one you may have heard when you were in Sunday school would be, well, an egg is similar to the way we might understand the Trinity. It's got three parts, a shell, a yolk, and a white, and yet it is one thing. I think a better one is H2O. H2O water uh, can appear as, as water, a liquid, as ice, uh, or a solid, or as a gas. So it's one thing, one essence, manifest in three different ways. And I think that actually is a pretty good description. Yet whatever images, whatever language we use to try and describe this to the Trinity, there still always is this mystery around it because there is a piece of what the Trinity is that defies logic to some degree, that something can be three things and yet one thing at the same time. And I have to confess that as a younger man, that troubled me some. Maybe the Trinity troubles you some. That I, I found it difficult, I found it troubling, that I could not really comprehend the idea that God was three in one. This sort of basic understanding of God's nature just uh, was something that I had a lot of difficulty wrestling with the fact that I couldn't quite understand it. Well, over many years, my perspective on that has actually changed. And what really shifted my thinking was the realization that if God is indeed God, then God is great and vast and is beyond our comprehension and beyond our ability even to describe. And so, whereas I once felt that my difficulty in understanding the Trinity um, was problematic, now I see whatever mystery, whatever difficulty uh, that I find around the Trinity uh, as not a difficulty, now for me, it stands as a witness, as a testimony to the greatness of God. Because if I could fully describe, if I could fully understand God, then God wouldn't be very great. But the fact that even God's just basic 
nature as three in one, the fact that even that is more than I can fully comprehend just speaks to me, to the infinite wonder and greatness of God. And so I, I share that with you. If you've ever struggled with the Trinity, with the mystery, with the difficulty of it, maybe you might come to see it the way I do as a testament to the greatness of our immeasurable God.